Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. I'll introduce you to a group of women in the Oakland County area who spent the day learning all about shooting sports, lots of different types of shooting sports. You won't want to miss that story. It was a great day out there. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're actually going to kick things off in the Upper Peninsula, showing you some brook trout research that's being done up there in the Keweenaw. A really cool story. We're also going to have time for a bragging board as well. And this is a shortened show this week because our PBS stations are in pledge. So pledge early and pledge often. And it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. So most of us are familiar with brook trout. They're maybe the most beautiful trout in Michigan, or maybe even the world. Typically you think of brook trout as being, you know, a few inches. If you get one that's, uh, that maybe requires two hands to hold, you've gotten a big one. Well, coaster brook trout are brook trout that don't only live in the stream, but they will migrate out to lake habitat, namely Lake Superior, where they're able to obtain a much larger size because they're eating bait fish and other food sources. These fish are really incredible. They are native to our upper Great Lakes. Um, a lot of the popular sport fish are, are not, like the Pacific Salmonids and the Atlantic Salmon and the Brown Trout. Coasters are the fish that were originally here, and so protecting them is really important. Unfortunately though, there's not a whole lot of them left in the Michigan waters. Uh, there's a few streams that have populations that we know are are hanging on, but they have faced a lot of adversity over the years. Um, early settlement involved a lot of uh, fishing for coaster brook trout. Um, that kind of resulted in a plummeting of their numbers. Overfishing and also the changes that we've seen in the habitat. So they rely on a lot of this small stream tributary habitat for spawning. And so we've seen a lot of sedimentation in some of these streams that have kind of had adverse effects on their, their ability to spawn successfully. Uh, where streams that had been nice gravel substrates with lots of um, groundwater influence have become uh, inundated with, with sand at times. Uh, really causing a, a reduction in, in population numbers. So a lot of the work that we're doing now is trying to understand where these coaster brook trout still exist and how they're behaving in these streams so that we can uh, better manage these populations. Figuring out where these brook trout live and how long they stay there is accomplished by using a wide variety of tools, both in the river and in Lake Superior. 
Now we're able to use some different tools to monitor uh, these brook trout and their movements, including RFID tags, which are a tag similar to what you would put in your dog at the vet. We can mark uh, fish with those tags and set up large antenna stations to track their movements in and out of streams to get an idea of if brook trout in a certain stream are in fact migrating out to Lake Superior or if they are strictly a resident uh, population, meaning that they would just stay in the stream. There's other types of tags too that we're able to use to get a better idea of the, the larger scale migration. So acoustic tags have a battery in them and they'll emit a signal. These can be read from up to a quarter mile away from a receiver. And there's a large network of these in place in uh, the Great Lakes uh, and up here in Lake Superior. A lot of it was geared towards sturgeon work, but we're able to use these same type of receivers to get some really cool information on movements of uh, brook trout and coaster brook trout out in the bigger Lake Superior, where some of these other tagging uh, techniques aren't really feasible. We're also working uh, on microchemistry, which is a technique to look at bony structures that are found on the fish, either their otolith, uh, ear bone, or a, their maxilla, which is their lip bone, which can be um, removed non-lethally. And so the chemistry of the bony structure is able to tell us what water body that fish lived in earlier in its life. So had that fish been in Lake Superior its entire life or in the stream the entire life? And based on these chemical signatures, we can actually tell um, when the fish may have transitioned between those two different habitats. We just don't know a lot about coasters, really. Um, some of the data that we have um, is a great starting point, um, but it's really important that we learn more about when these fish are moving and the extent of their migrations um, so that we can better manage the populations and know what uh, habitat is necessary during certain uh, segments of their life. Understanding what streams these brook trout live in and how they use them is vital when it comes to managing them. Thankfully, there's a great collaborative effort in this part of the UP to learn more about them. So the few streams that have had substantial scientific research um, have shown a lot of the migration occurs in late summer uh, or early fall. So basically the fish are moving into the tributaries to spawn and then leaving shortly thereafter. Uh, but some of the streams that we've looked at more recently uh, with the tagging technology, we found that the migration patterns can be quite a bit different. And so in some of these smaller streams, we see fish moving into them in the spring and staying throughout the summer. Uh, that of course has important implications for their potential harvest in these streams. Uh, but that's why it's really important that we know how migration uh, patterns change from stream to stream and from different habitats. These research projects that, that we're talking about that are, that are ongoing and that we plan for the future are really part of a cool collaborative effort between university researchers, so uh, for example, Dr. Casey Huckins here at Michigan Tech, along with uh, the Michigan D Department of Natural Resources. Uh, Troy Zorn's played a big role in um, facilitating some of these projects, as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So Henry Quinlan out of the Ashland office has really um, been a key player um, in getting a lot of these projects off the ground and seeing them through. So it's really cool to see uh, these different agencies and universities coming together to accomplish some of this work, as well as some of the Trout Unlimited um, chapters that have contributed to some of the student research that's happened. And the Greater Lake Superior Foundation has also contributed uh, funding to a lot of these projects. These brook trout hold a special place in Michigan's history, and hopefully the research being done in this part of the UP will help ensure their survival. Special thanks to Chris for teaching us all a little bit more about coaster brook trout. Last Saturday at the Oakland County Sportsman's Club, a group of women gathered to learn all sorts of different shooting sports disciplines. They also learned how to throw axes, knives, and how to start fires. Welcome to Waterford Township, Oakland County Sportsman Club. This is our first annual Ladies Adventure Day. So this day celebrates ladies and we're eliminating the men and the competition and it's just ladies shooting the best they can. They could shoot, be professionals or they could be novice. So this day celebrates them. I feel the ladies shoot different or perform different when there's men around 
and with the with the all being ladies there's a different camaraderie you know they they feel inspired they're motivated they want to do better yet not on a competitive level they build each other up monique noticed a need for this new ladies event at the sportsman club here we have a junior adventure day program and i've been part of that for 10 years and I just had a light bulb go off and said, why don't we do this for ladies? Well, we're going to be doing archery, muzzle loaders. At muzzle loaders, we're going to shoot the black powder gun. We're going to throw a knife and a tomahawk, learn to start a fire with flint and steel. Then we're going to go over to shotgun. We're going to shoot uh, three to four rounds of shotgun, depending on how everything goes, time-wise. Uh, we're going to go to rifle. Uh, shoot rounds there. We have the USPSA pistol match set up, so he wanted to be involved, so we're going to be shooting 9mm pistols. And then our guest for the day is Lori Card with Wild Card Adventures. So at every discipline, we're going to start off with a safety lesson. Uh, parts of the weapon, whatever, archery, the bow, shotgun, you know, the shaft and the trigger and so we're going to have a safety demonstration and then we're going to go out on the ranges and fire the disciplines we're going to have six groups uh, ladies of 14 and we're going to rotate and then meet back here at archery for lunch um, have a raffle a couple raffles and then do the last three sub clubs and send them home the thing I love about these ladies' events is how the participants build each other up and cheer each other on at every little victory. Things were heating up over at the Primitive Skills course where ladies were learning how to start a fire with natural materials. There you go. Good, good. Start blowing. That's all you need. Good job. Okay. See how she got the little red spot on there? As soon as you get a red spot on there, you're good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You gotta, you, you try oh, to go, cut go. it, right? You oh, no! Take it nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's they may never need to use some of these skills, but just learning how to do so and becoming successful at these activities is a victory in itself for these ladies. The hands-on experience itself is sometimes the catalyst to a lifelong passion. Other times, it's just another check mark on a bucket list of obstacles that have been overcome in facing fears of a new sport that seemed intimidating at first. Today's guest speaker was Lori Card with Wild Card Outdoor Adventures, who serves as a great ambassador to women who are curious about the outdoors and don't know where to start. Wild Card Outdoor Adventures is a nonprofit for women and children where we promote, educate, encourage, and empower them to get them in the outdoors, whether it's hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, whatever it is, just to let them know that it's there. And we organize all sorts of events to make this happen. Yeah, we're right here in Commerce Township, so Oakland County. We do events all over Michigan, and we're starting to branch into other states as well. The clothing line for women. So many women say they can't find anything. Well, I brought mine so they can at least look at it, touch it, feel it, hands-on. Yep, see it. Um, talk about different ways of being able to pack your gear. At lunchtime, I had a chance to catch up with some of the ladies to see how their day was going so far. Uh, well, Julia's been trying to get me to come out to events like this for years now, and finally it worked out where I could leave my kids with the husband and come on out. <laughs> so. And do you think it's different hanging out with ladies? Yeah, and, but it's good too because it's like I've always had a hard time finding women who like to do the same stuff that I do. And so it's nice to be around women who at least want to try different things. Awesome. Very cool. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I grew up doing the archery leagues here, so it's like a family. And when Julie mentioned the, the Women's Day, I was like, I have to go. <laughs> so, she yeah. drove all the way from Grand Rapids. Two hours. This. Everyone seemed to be having a great time here at Ladies Adventure Day. Over at the Shotgun Club, ladies were instructed on shotgun basics and safety and headed out to the skeet range to try their skills on some low house clay targets. The best part of these events is seeing how the ladies always cheer each other on. It didn't matter if they broke a clay pigeon or not. The victory for some was simply shouldering a shotgun and pulling the trigger. Wow. Wow. 
What do you think so far? It's been so fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. We've never done anything like this. No, no. Oh, so. Cool. so we got sisters and mom. Yeah. Yep. Mom here, yep. And awesome. I've never even touched a gun before. So. Really? <laughs> she conquered fears first, today. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm here for. Yep. <laughs> yeah. She shot a gun. Awesome. So what yeah. made you decide to do this? Well, it was my neighbor. She invited us. And of course, she just said we were going to shoot bow and ear and a gun. And I was like, why not? So I just thought, <laughs> let's just do it. I, you know, I really, and at the point in my life where I want to just face my fears and being with this great group of women doing it together just makes me stronger. Awesome. Great. Very cool. How about you yeah. girls? Yeah, it's really empowering to see like all the women doing something just so different yeah. and then like everyone supporting each other. It's like yeah. us girls like have a bond and it's yeah. like really cool. I was gonna say bonding. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. The, cl the shooting of the clay pigeons. Oh nice. How to hit in front of it um, opposed to right straight on it. Okay. So that was, that was something that I didn't know. So that was interesting. Have you guys shot before today? Yes. Yep, okay. a little bit. Awesome. So <laughs> what have you done already today? Oh, I shot a musket <laughs> and I threw an axe right. and I threw a knife and I was successful at all three. Awesome. After a few tries. Did you start a fire? Oh, ladies, and cool. I started a fire you and shoot. did that one too. Cool. I have, I've learned a lot to be honest with you. Like. I've shot shotguns my whole life, but I just learned some new stuff over there that I didn't know about. So. The courses are designed to help introduce beginners to the shooting sports, but also to help hone the skills of those who may already have experience. The sixth event of the day was the archery range, where some were learning for the first time, while others perfected their techniques. All in all, the Ladies' Adventure Day at the Oakland County Sportsman's Club was a success. Special thanks to Monique Matson and her crew of volunteers and financial supporters who made it all possible. It's great to see so many ladies of all ages enjoying the shooting sports and all they have to offer right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of summertime fun headed your way. Lots of different fishing adventures to be had here on Michigan Out of Doors. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. And hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. 
Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man I'm not 